prepared for a harrowing ordeal. We have several hundred numbers here to do, and the doors are being locked until we're through. Be prepared if you harbor any qualms. Be prepared for this foolery of Tom's. Of the ethical integrity we totally disgraced. And we think that you will find this all in questionable taste. Every possible expense was clearly spent. Oh, thanks. Let's go. Not that easy. Come back. Oh, shucks. Come back. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I should like to make it quite clear at the outset that most of the blame for the so-called entertainment we're about to inflict upon you belongs to the man responsible for the words and music you're about to hear, Tom Lehrer. This evening, Andre Hatting, Jonathan Rands, Tim Pluman, the orchestra, and myself, Michael McGovern, will be acting as your guides as we explore Mr. Lehrer's slightly off-center world. And we begin with a song which pays tribute to the Boy Scouts, those noble little bastions of decency the world over, whose internationally famous motto may well serve as a further warning to you. In case you have forgotten it, it is as follows. Be prepared. That's the Boy Scouts marching song. Be prepared. As through life you march along. Be prepared to hold your liquor pretty well. Don't write naughty words on walls if you can't spell. Be prepared. Be found. And be careful not to smoke them while the scout master's around. For he only will insist the baby shack. Be prepared. Be prepared. That's the Boy Scouts' moral creed. Be prepared. And be clean in word and deed. Don't solicit for your sister. That's not nice. Unless you get a good percentage of her price. Be prepared. subject of tonight's symposium, Tom Lehrer, enjoyed an enormous, uh, well, limited popularity during the 1950s and early 60s, performing dubious songs of his own devising, all of them totally uncalled for. He was particularly adept at attacking sacred cows, having made thoroughly sure to milk them first. He has spent most of his life in academic circles, including 14 years at Harvard University, where he both studied and taught mathematics and statistics. It was while he was an undergraduate at Harvard that he decided to devote the rest of his life to what has since become a rather successful scientific project. Namely, the attempt to prolong adolescence beyond all previous limits. <laughs> as an example, he is 52 years of age, but still prefers to refer to it as 11 centigrade. <laughs> Apart from Harvard, he has taught at several other American universities, all of which are still standing. He's performed in several American nightclubs, none of which is. He's also made numerous concert appearances before comparatively live audiences throughout the world. And tonight's show is drawn largely from material performed at those appearances between 1953 and 1965. Since then, he's returned to teaching mathematics. <laughs> He hasn't made any stage appearances for years, hasn't written any songs for quite a long while. For one thing, he feels that political satire finally became obsolete when Henry Kissinger was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> the hilariousness of which event surpasses by far anything a satirist could come up with. So for the next 50 minutes or so, the four of us will be demonstrating his work and in so doing, illustrating his attitude towards it. As he himself once said, if after hearing these songs, just one human being is inspired to say something nasty to a friend or perhaps strike a loved one, then it will all have been worthwhile. Uh, we begin with an example of Tom Lehrer's pastoral style. A song about springtime in general and in particular about one of the many delightful pastimes the coming of spring affords us all. Spring is here. Spring is here. Life is 
your toes and life is dear. I think the loveliest time of the year is the spring. Don't you? I do. Of course you do. But there's one thing that makes spring complete for us. And makes every Sunday a treat for us. When they see us coming, the birdies all try and hide. But they still go for peanuts when coated with cyanide. <laughs> the sun's shining bright, everything seems all right when we're poisoning pigeons in the park. La 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 la. Notoriety and cause much anxiety in the Audubon Society with our games. They call it impiety and lack of propriety and, and quite, quite a variety of unpleasant names. But it's not against any religion to want to dispose of a pigeon. Pigeons in the park. And maybe we'll do with a sparrow or two. As we poison the pigeons in the park. We'll murder them all amidst laughter and merriment. Except for a few, we take home to experiment. My pass may be quickening with each drop of trickening. Pigeon. It just takes a smidgen to poison a pigeon in the palm. Thank you very much. And now for our first encore. <laughs> Whilst other people writing songs on behalf of their respective causes, Tom Lehrer was supporting his with songs like Give War a Chance <laughs> and uh, We Shall Undercome. <laughs> Indeed, this next song takes a look at life as it is lived in larger cities. <laughs> Breathe, yeah. Pollution, pollution, they got smog and smoke and mud. Turn on your tap and get hot and cold running crud. See the Halibuts and the Sturgeons being wiped out by detergents. Fish gotta swim and birds gotta fly. They don't last long if they try. Pollution, pollution. Some monoxide will pollution, pollution, when the gas must go to bed. Then you can breathe all as you don't inhale. Lots of things there for you to drink, but stay away from the kitchen sink. Throw off your breakfast garbage, and I've got a hunch that the folks downstream will drink it for lunch. So go to the city.
We would now like to consider the folk song, or to be more accurate, a subspecies of the form, uh, the folk song of protest. Actually, you had to admire the people who sang these songs. It took a certain amount of courage to get up in a college auditorium or coffee house and come out strongly in favor of things that most of the audience was against, uh, such as peace and justice and brotherhood and so on. <laughs> the one we have here, like all true folk songs, should be accompanied on a genuine folk instrument. Alas, we have none at hand. So imagine, if you will, that our pianist is playing an 88-string guitar. <laughs> Join us now as we march behind the folk song army. to play. similar vein, I'd like to sing you a song that is completely pointless. <laughs> it, it consists of some information that Mr. Lear picked up during his bright college days and is simply a list of the chemical elements set to one of Sir Arthur Sullivan's greatest hits. And who knows, it may prove useful to some of you uh, one day in a somewhat bizarre set of circumstances. <laughs> Antimony, arsenic, aluminum, selenium, and hydrogen, and oxygen, and nitrogen, and rhenium is nickel, neodymium, neptunium, germanium, and iron, americium, ruthenium, uranium, europium, zirconium, latinum, vanadium, and latinum, and osmium, and astan, and radium, and gold, and protactinium, and indium, and gallium. <laughs> and iodine, and thorium, and thulium, and thallium. Yttrium, Eterbium, Actinum, and Burbidinum, and Borogadolonium, and Erbium, Iridium, and Stonetium, and Silicon, and Sulvan, and Samarium, and Visibromine, Lithium, Berenium, and Berium. Well, isn't that interesting? <laughs> I hope you're all paying attention. There'll be a short quiz during the interval. <laughs> and there's holmium and helium and hafnium and erbium and phosphorus and francium and fluorine and terbium and manganese and mercury and and magnesium and sprosium and scandium and sodium and cesium lead, chrysidimium and platinum and plutonium palladium, promethium, potassium and polonium tantalum, technetium, titanium, tellurium <laughs> and cadmium and calcium and chromium and curium Californium and fermium, bacalium and also metalabium, einsteinium, nobelium, and argon, kryptonium, radium, zinc, zinc, and rhodium, and chlorine, copper, 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 tungsten, sodium. <laughs> These are the only ones of which the news has come to Harvard, and there may be many others, but they haven't been discovered. <laughs> During 
the early 70s, a television program called The Electric Company appeared in America, and the series was designed to teach children how to read. And Tom Lehrer was asked to write a few songs for them. One of the results was this charming little number with a mild academic flavor, which attempts to explain the concept of silent E. <laughs> People feel that marriage as an institution is dying out. Well, this was driven home to me rather forcefully the other morning when I received the following correspondence. Darling, I love you and cannot live without you. Marry me or I will kill myself. <laughs> well, naturally, I was a bit flattered with that at first until I happened to glance at the envelope and saw that it was addressed to the occupant. <laughs> which brings us now to two songs about long-standing relationships, one of which, when you are old and grey, offended some people at first who regarded it as a reflection of male chauvinism. So we have extended the range somewhat. But first here is Jonathan with a torch song from the male point of view entitled, She's My Girl. <laughs> Sharks gotta swim and bats gotta fly I've gotta love one woman till I die To Ed or Dick or Bob, she may be just a slob But to me, she's my girl In winter, the bedroom is one large ice cube and she squeezes the toothpaste from the middle of the tube. Her hairs in the sink have driven me to drink. But she's my girl. She's my girl. She's my girl. And I love her. The girl my money spent for, 
the girl that I lament for, the girl my back is bent for, the girl I owe the rent for, the girl I gave up Lent for, is a girl that heaven meant for me. Tastes like shampoo. <laughs> I come home for dinner and get peanut butter stew. Or if I'm in luck, it's broiled ice hockey puck. But oh well, what the hell? She's my girl. And I love her. For I know you'll disgust me when you're old and getting fat. An awful debility, a lesson, utility, a loss of mobility is a strong possibility. In all probability, I'll lose my virility and you your fertility and desirability. And this liability of total sterility will lead to hostility and a sense of futility. So let's act with agility while we still have the facility, for we'll soon reach senility and lose the ability. Enjoying our compatibility and cognizant of its fragility, and I question the advisability of relying on its durability. You're aware of my inflexibility and my quintessential volatility and the total inconceivability of my showing genuine humility. Though your undeniable nubility may excuse a certain puerility, your alleged indispensability underestimates my versatility. Yep. And your boyish irresponsibility and what now is charming juvenility will in time lose its adorability and appear much more like imbecility. Your teeth will start to go, dear. Your waist will start to spread. In 20 years or so, dear, I'll wish that you were dead. The decade which produced some of Tom Lehrer's best-known songs was, of course, the 1960s, a period of great international tension. It made a lot of people feel like a Christian scientist with appendicitis. <laughs> Things seemed bad enough when America and Britain first got the bomb, but then emergent nations, which we used to call colonies, <laughs> also began to develop the ability to explode a nuclear bomb. Powers maintained that way. Who's next? France got 
the bomb that don't you grieve, cause she's on our side, I believe. China's got the bomb, but have no fear, cause they can't wipe us out till at least next year. Who's next? It's own device transistorized at half the price. South Africa wants two, that's right. One for the black. And one for the white. Who's next? Next to go, and who knows, maybe Monaco will try to stay serene and calm. Ronald Reagan's got the bomb. Who's next? 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 Uh, written in 1947, which is, which is replete with all the accoutrement of this art form. In particular, an idiotic refrain. In this case, rickety tickety tin. You will notice cropping up throughout interminable verses. A large number of verses being a feature expressly designed to please the true devotees of the folk song, who, who seem to find singing 50 verses of On Top of Old Smokey twice as enjoyable as singing 25. Irish ballad. <laughs> One last thing. One uh, characteristic feature of public folk singing is, of course, audience participation. And this happens to be a very good song for singing along to. So if any of you feel like joining in on some of the choruses, we'd be most grateful if you would leave right now. Thank you. <laughs>
to do so she would depart to lie and lying she knew was this thing Next effort <clears throat> is for the benefit of those many parents who, due to the revolution in mathematics teaching, known as new maths, have been put in the embarrassing position of not being able to help their children with their arithmetic homework. <laughs> <laughs> so as a public service, here is a brief lesson in new maths. Ah, good show. Ah, take a seat. Oh, all right. <laughs> I'd uh, like you to consider this simple subtraction problem. Oh, simple problem. <laughs> yes. Uh, 342. 342. Subtract 173. 173. Mm -hmm. Oh, of course. Borrow one. Silly me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. That's better, isn't it? 3 from 12. That's, uh, that's 9. And that becomes 13 then. 7 from 13. <laughs> 6. And that becomes 2. 1 from it. Uh, 169. Yes, your answer is correct. Uh, uh, but your method, to say the least, is a little muddled. <laughs> <laughs> You see, um, the important thing about new maths is understanding what you are doing, uh, rather than getting the right answer. <clears throat> Shall I show you how we do it now? <laughs> ah, yes. Well, you see, you can't take three from two. The two is less than three. So you look at the four in the tens place. Now, that's really four tens, so you make it three tens, regroup, and you change a ten to ten ones, and you add them to the two, you get twelve, and you take away three, and that's nine. Clear? Instead of four, in the tenth place, you've got three. Because you added one, that is, say, ten to the two, but you can't take seven from three, so you look at the hundreds place. From the three, you then use one to make ten tens. You know why four plus minus one plus ten is fourteen minus one. Because? And because addition is commutative, right? So now you've got thirteen tens. You take away seven, and that leaves five. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> well, six, actually. <clears throat> But you see, it's the idea that's the important thing. Now go back to the hundreds place you left with two. You take away one and one from two leaves. One. Exactly. Hooray for new maths. New maths. It won't do me a bit of good to pursue maths. It's so simple, so very simple, that only a child can do it. Do you follow me? At a distance. Good, good. Because you see, that's not actually the answer I had in mind. Oh. No, no, no. Uh, the book I got this problem out of wants you to do it in the base of eight. What? Uh, but don't panic. Oh. The base eight is just the same as the base ten, really. Ah. If you're missing two fingers, that is. Mm. Shall we have a go at it? Oh, after you. Nah. Well, you can't take three from two. Two is less than three, so you look at the four in the eighth place. Now that's really four eight, so you make a three eight three group, and you change an eight to eight ones, add it to the two, and you get one two base eight, which is ten base ten. Take away three, and that's seven, Claire. Now, instead of four in the eighth place, you've got three, because you added one, that is to say eight to the two, but you can't take seven from three, so you look at the sixty fours. The sixty fours? <laughs> sixty four is simply eight squared. Ask a silly question. Now, from the three, you then use one to make eight eights, and you add those eights to the three, and you get one three base eight, which in other words, in base ten, you have eleven, and you take away seven, and seven from eleven is four. Now go back to the sixty fours, you left with two, you take away one, and one from two leaves. Uh, uh, one! You got it! I haven't the faintest idea what I'm talking about. Or a four, new maths, new maths. It won't do you a bit of good to review math. It's so simple, so very simple. That only a child can do it. Dear. Ooh. <laughs> uh, 
Our problem, often dealt with in plays and books and films, is the inability of some people to communicate with the people they love. We see stories of husbands and wives who can't communicate, children who can't communicate with their parents and so on. But I think the real problem with these people who can't communicate is that they will go on and on and on, <laughs> bemoaning the fact that they can't communicate. I just happen to think that if people can't communicate, the least they can do is to shut up. Which, of course, brings us now to the love song. And firstly, we have Andre with a beautiful Viennese love song conjuring images of gaily waltzing couples and stale champagne being drunk from sweaty slippers. The ravishing yet poignant Wiener Schnitzel waltz. This will be followed by the hauntingly lovely and tender song sung by Jonathan, I Hold Your Hand in Mine. Do you remember the night you had me so tight as we danced to the Wiener Schnitzel? Blind to your obvious voice as we dance across the scene to the strains of the Wiener Schnitzel. Indeed, me too. <laughs> I remember the night you held me so tight as we danced to the Wiener Schnitzel. Woods. Your face was a glare and your teeth rather yellowish. The music was lovely, quite either no valueish. I drank wine, you drank chocolate. My joy would be complete, dear, if you were only here. But still I keep your hand as a precious souvenir. The night you died, I cut it off. I really don't know why. For now, each time I kiss it, I get bloodstains on my tie. I'm sorry now I killed you, for our love was something fine. But till they come to get me, I will hold your hand in mine. Thank you. The state of human relationships today reminds me of a philosopher of whom Tom Lehrer has spoken. His first name was Henry, and to give you an idea of what an individualist he was, he spelt his name H-E-N-3-R-Y. Well, the three was silent, you see. <laughs> uh, I'm particularly reminded of something he said before he was taken off to the Massachusetts State Home for the bewildered. He said, life is like a sewer. 
What you get out of it depends entirely on what you put into it. <laughs> well, Michael is going to put himself into our next love song. Let us see what we get out of it. for the touch of your whips, dear. You can raise wealth like nobody else as we dance to the masochism tango. Let our love be a flame, not an ember. Says me that you want to dismember. Blacken my eye, set fire to my tie as we dance to the masochism tango. At your command, before you here I stand, my heart is in my hand. Oh. It's here that I must be. My heart entreats. Just hear those savage beats. And go put on your cleats and come and trample me. <laughs> your heart's hard as stone or mahogany. Well, that's why I'm in such exquisite agony. My soul is on fire, so flame with desire. Which is why I perspire when I tango. You caught my nose in your left, left castanet, love. I can never forget, love, how this passion was born. How I envied the rose your teeth used to clench, love. When I tried something French, love, all I got was a thorn. <laughs> your eyes cast a spell that bewitches. The last time I needed 20 stitches to sew up the gash you made with your lash. As we dance to the masochism tango, bash in my brain, make me scream with pain, kick me once again, say we'll never part. I know too well I'm underneath your spell, so darling, if you smell something burning, it's my heart. Take your cigarette from its holder and burn your initials on my shoulder. <laughs> As we dance to the Marcel. <laughs> Kiss and tango. Shades of night are falling Comes a fellow everyone knows It's the old dope peddler Spreading joy wherever he goes Every evening you will find him Round our neighborhood It's the old dope peddler Doing well by doing good He gives the kids free samples Because he knows full well That today's young innocent faces Will be tomorrow's clientele. Here's a cure for all your troubles. Here's an end to all distress. 
It's the old dope peddler with his powdered happiness. A tradition has grown in America whereby various weeks are designated to honor one or other worthy cause. Now, one such week occurs in February and is called National Brotherhood Week. During this week, Americans are supposed to drop whatever they're doing and love one another, or as we say today, relate to each other. Now, I'm sure that we all agree we ought to love one another. Yet, I happen to know there are certain persons in this world who do not love their fellow human beings. And I hate people like that. <laughs> so here is our tribute to National Brotherhood Week. Oh, the white folks hate the black folks. And the black folks hate the white folks. And to hate all but the right folks is an old established rule. But during National Brotherhood Week, National Brotherhood Week, New York is not the poor. The bomb that drops on you gets your friends and neighbors too. There'll be nobody left behind to grieve. Yes, we all will go 